Hey everyone, today I'm gonna teach you how to get from 1 to 99 in everybody's favorite skill, runecrafting. Yay! I got 99 without going too insane, and now so can you. However, I didn't do it completely alone. I had the help of my clan chat, which you can join by checking out the link in the description below. First up, the only requirement to train runecrafting is the Rune Mysteries quest. It takes maybe 10 minutes, and most of that is walking, so if you hate quests, don't worry, it'll be quick. Next up, we have Essence pouches. Essence pouches are items that, well, hold essence. Almost every training method in this video requires you to use essence of some type, so you're gonna want these. However, they can't be used with the Zaya runecrafting methods I'll discuss later. Anyway, you can unlock them by completing the Enter the Abyss mini quest. You get the small pouch for free, and you can get the rest by killing creatures in the abyss. Each pouch has its own level requirement to use them, but you can get them all as drops even if you don't have the level to use it yet. Now, essence pouches will only last a certain number of uses before being damaged and will need to be repaired. You can repair them by entering the abyss where you'll need to complete an obstacle, which depending on which one you pick, you may need additional tools to complete, and speaking to the dark mage in the middle, or by simply contacting him with the NPC contact spell on the lunar spellbook. It requires 67 magic and completion of the lunar diplomacy quest, but it is very worth it. When you talk to him, he's kind of rude, but I would be too if I had hundreds of people calling me every five minutes. There's a few tips and tricks you should know that'll make your life easier and increase your XP. First, I want to show you how to bank more easily, especially when doing methods that give you multiple types of runes. Instead of clicking on every rune type to deposit it, we can instead withdraw what we need, like pouches, remove their placeholders, and then go into the bank settings, press all under bank fillers, and then press fill. Now, whenever I press the deposit inventory button, I keep my pouches. So let's say I go do a trip to an altar and want to deposit my runes, I can just press the deposit inventory button. If they don't deposit, it probably means I don't have a placeholder for that rune, and all I have to do is remove one of these empty placeholders, deposit the runes by hand, and then next time they'll all deposit with the deposit inventory button. Let's say you want to withdraw one stamina potion while also withdrawing an inventory of essence without having to right click or swap buttons. If you have rune light, you can open menu entry swapper, open the item swaps tab, check on customizable shift click, and switch bank withdraw to withdraw one. Lastly, open your bank and select the all quantity. So now when refilling your inventory, shift click the stamina potion to withdraw one and click the essence as normal to withdraw a full inventory's worth. Another useful tip is that while you're in the bank, you can right click on staminas in your inventory and select the drink option and also right click essence pouches and fill them, all without having to close the bank. Or again, if you're on rune light, you can switch the bank deposit option to eat slash wield, and now by shift clicking, you can drink staminas, empty pouches, and fill them. Last tip, if you have shift click to drop items ticked on in the game settings, you can shift click your essence pouches to empty them. Now, I've brought up essence a few times so far. When crafting runes, you're essentially taking essence to an altar and turning it into runes. There's a few different types of essence you can use. Rune essence, which we'll ignore, pure essence, and day alt essence. Pure essence is really cheap and can be bought on the grand exchange in bulk. Day alt essence, however, is untradeable and you have to mine it yourself, which requires level 60 mining. You can also only mine it in the day alt essence mines, an area that requires completion of the Sins of the Father quest. But for some players, it's worth it, because day alt gives 50% more XP per essence than pure essence, and mining it is fairly AFK. In most cases, it'll be faster for you to just use pure essence, but if you really hate runecrafting and would prefer to just AFK in the mines for a while, I'd highly recommend day alt. Keep in mind, it can't be used on the Zaya runecrafting altars, which I'll discuss later. With that out of the way, let's get training. I'll discuss the fastest methods first and include alternatives later. First up, for levels 1 to 23, you're going to Want to do the Enter the Abyss mini quest. It's really easy, unlocks essence pouches, and gets you straight to level 9. After that, if you do the Eyes of Gluff request, you'll get enough XP to get to level 23. The quest requires completion of the Grand Tree, as well as 5 construction and 46 magic, but if you don't already have those, they don't take long to get. Now, after all that hard work and grinding, you finally unlocked the final, fastest training method. From levels 23 to 99, you'll be crafting lava runes. No, 
I'm not kidding, it's the best method in the game and you unlock it this early, but there is a slight catch. You're also going to want level 82 magic and completion of the Lunar Diplomacy quest so you can use Magic Imbue, a spell on the Lunar Spellbook. You can do it without this, but it'll cost you a lot more, but I'll get to that later. For your setup, you're first going to want to have some stamina potions in the bank as you'll be doing a lot of running. Next, you'll want weight reducing gear like Graceful, a Fire Tiara, a lot of binding necklaces, a lot of rings of dueling, a mist battle staff for unlimited water and air runes, and a tome of fire for unlimited fire runes. In your inventory, you'll want essence pouches. A lot of people recommend just bringing the biggest two for efficiency's sake, unless you're below level 75, in which case just bring all the pouches you have. You'll also want a rune pouch with astral and cosmic runes so you can cast magic imbue and NPC contact. If you don't have magic imbue unlocked, you'll instead have to bring an earth talisman with you every trip you make. Or if you have pouches, you'll need to bring two talismans. Every time you craft lava runes without magic imbue, the talisman is, I guess, taken by the altar? That's the best way I can think to say that. So you'll need a ton of earth talismans. Continuing, if you have a crafting cape, bring that to teleport to the bank. You'll also need a lot of earth runes. And lastly, pure or day out essence in the rest of your inventory. Once you have all that, use a ring of dueling and teleport to the dueling arena. Run north towards the fire altar, which luckily isn't very far away. When you get there, cast magic imbue and then use your earth runes on the altar. If you're using pouches, empty those, use your earth runes on the altar again, and either teleport to castle wars on the ring of dueling to bank or use your crafting cape if you have one. It's really as simple as that. Just replace your necklace and ring when they break and repeat. Like I mentioned earlier, this is the fastest XP in the game. However, the amount you receive varies a lot Lot depending on your level and amount of pouches used, which can be hard to calculate. But I've put a chart on screen with data courtesy of the wiki displaying just how much you can expect. I should also mention this is one of the very few runecrafting methods where you lose money, but I think the trade-off is worth it. But as you saw, this is pretty click intensive, so let's talk about alternatives. The best alternative to lavas is the Arania slash ZMI altar. You can start using it at just level one. There's a semi-AFK portion and you make quite a bit of profit here. Unfortunately, to do it efficiently, you're once again going to need to complete Lunar Diplomacy and have level 71 magic for the Arania Altar Teleport. If you don't have that level, you can buy Arania Teleport tabs off the Grand Exchange, but that can get pretty pricey and you still need to have completed Lunar Diplomacy in order to use them. If you wanted, you could also just walk back and forth from the bank to the altar, but that cuts your XP down quite a bit and runecrafting is already already a really slow skill. Speaking of the bank, the bank at this altar is pretty unique. In order to use it, you'll have to pay a fee of 20 runes of your choosing every time. I'd recommend using mind runes as they're cheap, but that low price won't stop me from voting for the mind goblin boss if Jagex ever pulls it. But let's talk about what gear you should bring. First off, you'll need weight reducing gear like Graceful and preferably a charged up ring of endurance if you can afford it. I'd recommend a dust battle staff for unlimited air and earth runes, some defensive gear as there are high level creatures that can attack you, a rune pouch with astral and law runes for your Arania teleport, as well as whatever rune you'll be paying the banker with, and of course, don't forget your essence and essence pouches. You can also carry cosmic runes with you for NPC contact, but I prefer to just leave them in the bank and withdraw them whenever needed. Also, keep some stamina potions in the bank as you'll definitely need quite a few. I'd strongly recommend using the banking methods I talked about earlier in this video, but if you missed it, there should be a timestamp on screen right now. From here, you'll want to cast the Arania Teleport, run down the ladder, and then run all the way to the altar. If you're doing this on the official worlds 327 or 480, there should be a ton of other people there, and instead of running all the way to the altar manually, you can either follow somebody, or even better, use an item on them. It'll allow you to follow them without getting stuck unless they stop. I don't know why this works better than following, but blame RuneScape spaghetti code. Also, if you're on RuneLight or the Steam client, if you push your render distance up a ton, you can actually just zoom out and click next to the altar to run all the way there. After this, just click on the altar to craft the runes, cast the teleport, stop to bank, and run back to the altar. 
That's it. Again, XP rates vary greatly here, so here's the wiki estimations on what you'll receive at each level. At level 77, you've reached the holy land of runecrafting, blood runes. Finally, a method that you can truly do AFK. In order to do it, you'll also need 100% Arceus Favor, a pickaxe, a chisel, but if you forget one, there is a spawn at the mining area, and I'd also recommend at least 73 agility in order to use this shortcut. Not having access to it is, well, awful. Moving on, completing the Karend Medium Diary gives you a 5% chance to mine two essence blocks at once, which will slightly increase your XP rates, and if you wanted, you can also complete the Karend Elite Diary to get 10% additional blood runes, but you won't earn any bonus XP from it. Now, Zaya runecrafting methods are pretty unique, because you can't use pure or day alt essence here you actually mine the essence yourself at the dense essence mine. In order to get here, you can either cast the home teleport on the Arceus spellbook and run east, or use the Arceus fairy ring code CIS and again, run east. Keep in mind, you'll have to pay 80k to unlock it first by speaking to Trossa. You can also use the Book of the Dead if you have it, but I still haven't done the quest that unlocks it. I know it's been out for months and I still don't have my quest cape back, but I will get it eventually. Once you get to the mine, just mine until you have a full inventory. If you're on Runelight, I'd recommend installing the dense runecrafting plugin from the plugin hub so you can see whenever the rocks depletes easier. After your inventory is full, run over to the dark altar, click on it to turn your dense essence blocks into dark essence blocks, and run back to the mine. While running, use your chisel on the blocks to turn them into fragments. If you want to make this super AFK, you actually automatically chisel your whole inventory if you just chisel one and stand still. After that, mine another full inventory of blocks, turn them into dark ones, and then run to the blood altar. If you click right, you'll be able to run from the dark altar to the blood altar in really just two clicks. If you're clicking up here and nothing's happening, try running west a little and trying again. If you have rune light, expanding your outer zoom limit in the camera settings may also help. Once you get to the altar, click on it to turn your shards into blood runes, and then chisel the rest of your dark blocks and click the altar again. Once your inventory is empty, take this shortcut back down to the mine and repeat. At level 90, you unlock soul runes. It's the exact same process as blood runes, except instead you run to the soul altar. It's more XP per hour, but personally, I found that you do need more clicks to reach the altar and just did blood runes to 99 so I could do homework at the same time, which I imagine many of you will try as well. If you do decide to do soul runes, don't forget to use this shortcut to get back to the mining area. It's very easy to miss since it's up on a hill. For our next alternative, using the abyss, you can craft almost every rune in the game. The only actual requirement is completion of the enter the abyss mini quest. High agility and mining levels are also helpful, but not required, but you'll see why in a bit. The only downside of the abyss is that you have to travel through low level wilderness to get to it, and every time you use it, you become scold and lose all your prayer points. Mechanics like that make PKers start drooling, so as you guessed, it's a hot spot and you'll likely run into a few. Don't worry, most of the people that PK here though are pretty bad. Even with all that, it's a great option for training. XP rates are all over the place because you can craft a ton of different runes, but you should be able to do about 40 to 50 runs per hour. So take the XP you get from one run of whatever rune you're doing and multiply it. If you're looking to make some serious money, the Abyss is great for that. For example, at certain levels you unlock double runes, meaning for every essence you craft, you get two runes back. On screen now, I've shown a chart with a few runes that you can make in the Abyss for profit and what levels you'll need to have to make double. It also assumes you'll be able to do about 45 trips per hour. As for gear, you'll want weight reducing gear like Graceful. Don't worry if you get PK'd, you won't lose it since you won't be going above level 20 wilderness. You'll also need a ton of amulets of glory to teleport to Edgeville. Bring any type of pickaxe, the cheaper the better. But if your weight is above 0 kg, bring a black pickaxe as it's the lightest. If you have a low defense level, maybe bring a lightweight shield for defense and bring essence pouches and essence. Also, don't forget to have a few stamps in the bank. Now to train the method, first you want to teleport to Edgeville using your Amulet of Glory. Run north to the Mage of Zamorak and have him teleport you into the Abyss. Once inside, you need to get into the center ring. To do so, look for the closest obstacle. It should always be a mining or agility challenge, which is why we bring the pickaxe. Once inside the center ring, look for the rune you want to craft, enter the altar, craft it, and repeat. 
One thing I do every day when I turn on my computer is start up ExpressVPN, a super affordable yet also really fast VPN service. You may know the old story that Santa Claus can see everything you do. Well, so can your internet service provider. Even worse, many of them will sell your browsing data to advertising agencies. ExpressVPN encrypts your data, reroutes it through a secure server, and locks those pesky ISPs out. Not to mention, this also blocks website owners from being able to view your IP address. This is especially useful when you accidentally click on a malicious link. Anyone who has your IP has the capability to knock you offline, which is the last thing you want when you're playing RuneScape. ExpressVPN even has a no-logs policy, and their trusted server technology has raised the bar when it comes to security. If all that sounds good to you, my viewers can get three months of ExpressVPN for free with a subscription by visiting expressvpn.com slash colonello or clicking the link in the description below. So that's about it. As always, a huge thank you to the Old School Wiki team as a lot of their data was used to compile this guide. Thanks for watching.